See, one of the most amazing things that I find in the Bible is just how messed up, how ordinarily human all the people in it actually are. Now, why do I find it to be so amazing and even encouraging and comforting? Well, my name is Charles. Grab some coffee and let's talk. So why do I find this to be so amazing? Well, think about it for just a second. A holy book, you know, one used to show us how to relate to God, is full of those who, while considered to be the heroes of the faith, are actually shown to be very flawed individuals who always seem to miss the boat. No matter where you turn in the Bible, the New Testament, the Old Testament, anywhere, these paragons of faith are always portrayed as being fully human beings. Well, as fully human as you and I are, you know, full of faults and doubts and fears and missteps. And yet, it is through these very flawed people that God chooses to reveal himself and his love in these average, run-of-the-mill, everyday, ordinary, truly human, human beings. And amazingly, as he does so, they are transformed into folks who, while still not perfect, you know, whatever perfect means, but they are transformed into individuals who have abundance in life. They stumble, they struggle, they grow and they have a richness in life that rises above their circumstances. And it simply amazes me that God chooses to reveal himself in these and through these and by these folks who are messed up as I can be. And that is also the reason, though, that I find this to be both encouraging and comforting. See, the people I read about are just like me. I, I, I mean, you know, my life experiences and circumstances aren't exactly the same as theirs. Yes, the circumstances are different. But what is shared are the human imperfections, the stumbling around in faith, you know, the doubts, the shortcomings, the periodic failures. And I find this to be comforting and encouraging because in knowing this, Well, I find, well, here in the Bible, a whole community of folks, a family of human misfits with whom I fit right in. See, you and I, we're not alone. We are in very good company and stand on common ground with all those who have gone before, with those who also loved God and who were nothing other than merely human beings. Now, there is a quick note that I need to make about this. See, we don't want to become extremists in these types of conversations. For instance, I have often heard similar thoughts being used by folks to excuse their own failures rather than using them as a source of encouragement, you know, from the experiences of other people in asking for forgiveness, and then in seeking God's help for progressing and growing through them. Now see, this usually is done by folks for whom these stumblings, these shortcomings and failures are actually their preferred way of life, a preferred pattern of behavior, and not the occasional stumble, which means they are truly not a stumble at all doesn't it? But that's a topic for a different day. For now, the common ground that we share with these biblical giants is not found in trying to excuse or justify our preferred way of life. It is only found and held in common if it involves being honest that we have indeed erred and in seeking a way 
to grow in our relationship with Christ so that we may err no more. And I do find comfort and encouragement for growing in Christ as I read about how God forgave these folks. He encouraged them, he disciplined them, and he promoted them as they grew in their relationship with him. Indeed, in the Hall of Fame of Faith, you know, found in the book of Hebrews, from the listing of Noah forward or onward, we know of the less than perfect side of all these heroes of the faith. I mean, he, even David, you know, a man who we are told was a man after God's own heart, he had some pretty major failings, okay? some pretty big stumbles. And yet, all of these heroes, David included, asked for forgiveness. I mean, they apologized for what they had done. They did a 180, and they moved forward into growing once again. See, that is the way of growth. And there will always be room for growth. Indeed, to be alive is to be growing. To not be growing is to not be alive. I mean, we could say it this way, if we are not growing, we are indeed dying. And because my fellow misfits were able to continue growing in their faith, I do draw encouragement that I can as well. So there you go. There you have it, and there it is. You now know why I find it to be so amazing that the Bible is full of such ordinary people. And they are so ordinarily human people. See, they are the tired, the angry, the disappointed, the disappointing, the short-sighted, the self-centered, and so much like you and I. And now you also know why I find encouragement and comfort in this. They are concrete examples of God loving us and helping us in the midst of our failings in order that we might overcome them. And as a bonus, you also know that this is not an excuse to make you comfortable about stumbling if these failings are actually a preferred way of life, a pattern of preferred behavior. For to grow means to change, to get stronger, to rise above this stumbling. And God is involved in helping you grow. I mean, all the way, every day. Well, until next time, love simply, love wisely, and love well. And take encouragement from the fact that you are not the first person to stumble in your faith. You are not the first to have questions about it. And the testimony from the Bible is that God is okay with answering your questions and helping you stand once again after falling down. And that God always does this for his people, for he loves us just that much. So you are indeed a part of a great community, a great family who have been where you are. So take encouragement from this fact that even as God has helped them rise above their stumblings, he wants to help you rise above yours as well. He wants to help you enjoy that French press style of faith, one that is simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. It is the one that is full of the abundance of life that Jesus came to give. Well. Tell me what you think in the comments section below. Also, please click that like and the subscribe button, and then make sure to click that solid gray bell icon that shows up and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new conversation is posted. Oh, and please share this with a friend. For good coffee and good conversation, loves good company. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll catch up with you next time. Hmm.